In case you haven't heard, Donald Trump has won the presidential election, becoming the second president to serve two non-consecutive terms. We'll take a look at how he got there, but first, Sidney Hood's checking in with a political science professor about the fallout of what many have called the most important election of our lifetime. With Election Day being done and over with, there are probably still some questions some of you may or may not have in terms of what the country is going to look like over the next four years. We're taking all your questions straight to the experts. I'm speaking with a political science professor at AU at 1 o'clock. We'll have some answers for you starting at first at 4, then at live at 5, and then all new at News 12 at 6 o'clock. We'll break everything down for you. So be sure to check out this story at those times. We'll have some updates for you on our app and our website as well, WRDW.com. Okay, thanks, Sydney. This year's election looked a lot different than it did back in 2020. Mainly, we got the results days earlier. COVID changed the way we did things four years ago, and election officials have adopted new policies since. Hallie Turner takes a look at how things went yesterday. I'm working on an update of all things elections here in Richmond County. I'm meeting with the Board of Elections office today to just kind of discuss, now that all the ballots are in, the certification process. What comes next, how that works, where the ballots go next. We're also going to be discussing um, how smoothly things went in 2024 for elections versus how it went in 2020. What changes did we make here locally that they saw come to life um, during the 2024 election and, and make the process a lot smoother and what changes they um, did not didn't care to have uh, on election night and they hope to change and, and maybe make the process a little bit smoother um, in future elections. So we'll have the full story coming up all new tonight on News 12 at 6 o'clock. You can find that on WRDW.com or our News 12 app. All right, thanks for that, Hallie. And if you're watching our morning newscast this morning, we actually broke at about 5.30, 5.45 that Donald Trump had secured enough electoral college votes to, or, uh, to win the presidential election. So 270 is needed. He got to 277. How did we get there? The last domino to fall was Wisconsin here, the last 10 votes to put him over that 270 threshold. Now, that was part of this blue wall they call with Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Since 1992, these have all voted the same way, these three states and every election except 2016 and 2024 those have gone blue so that was a big difference in getting those uh in getting donald trump elected but that wasn't the only one we had north carolina georgia arizona nevada those were the other swing states that we were looking at north carolina and georgia have been called for donald trump nevada and arizona are leaning donald trump's way so all the swing states went in favor of the republican now let's take a look at georgia here because uh, uh, this was the theme across all these swing states. Kamala Harris, the vice president, was set to win these uh, these more metro counties, these urban counties. 72% of the vote there in Fulton County, that's where Atlanta is. And then some of these surrounding counties as well, DeKalb, 82% of the vote. Going over here to Cobb, 57% of the vote. And then Gwinnett picking up about 57% of the vote there as well. But as we jump back out into the statewide view, look at all this red in these rural counties. We'll just look at our area, Columbia County, 62 and half percent for Donald Trump. McDuffie County, 62 percent. And as you look at some of these smaller counties, the popular votes are lower. But when you add up all those margins, that makes up the deficit that Donald Trump was facing against Kamala Harris in some of these metro areas. And that wasn't just the case in Georgia. Let's go check out Charlotte here, Mecklenburg County in uh, North Carolina. This was 66 percent for Kamala Harris. She also did well in the Raleigh-Durham areas, too. But again, these uh, these more rural counties all went red. And this was the one state, the one swing state that Donald Trump won in 2020 against President Joe Biden. He won this one in 2016 as well. Uh, but this was the only one, like I said, he got in 2020 this year, getting all seven of them. So taking another look here at Wisconsin, because this was, the, like I said, the last domino to fall. Milwaukee, 68 percent of the vote for Kamala Harris. And then this is Madison right here, uh, University of Wisconsin in Dane County, 75 percent there. But again, that rural area really favoring the former president. So we do have a little bit of history with this election. Donald Trump becoming the second president to serve two non-consecutive terms, joining Grover Cleveland back in the 1800s. So it's been quite a while since we've seen anything like this. Just waiting for a couple more states to officially be called, but uh, this race is officially over as uh, Donald Trump has more than that 270 vote threshold that he needs. Let's check out a couple other races here uh, locally on our side of things as we scroll down towards the Richmond County Board of Education. Four seats up for grabs. We don't see that many seats up for grabs hardly ever when it comes to the Richmond County School 
school board. So taking a look at District 4, Shantae Boyd won that one with 72% of the vote over Reginald Forrest. District 5, Monique Braswell got about half the vote, but that was enough running up against A.K. Hassan and Christopher Mullins. In District 8, Mary Jane Abbott got 83% of the vote against Oni Poe. And then in District 10, Samantha Valentine getting nearly 60% of the vote against Lee Blitch. So a lot of new faces on that Richmond County Board of Education.